This is part four of the bicycle fork video. In the last three videos, we tackled steps one, two, three, and four. And in this video, we will tackle steps five and six. The following video, we will finally start building some solid geometry. Rolling back to step four, we'll just take a look at what we've done briefly. The first step was to insert our bike geometry file. The second step was to make a tilted right-hand plane passing through the steering axis. The third was a plane going through the top of the crown. And the fourth step was layout view of the entire fork on the front plane. The next two steps will be to place a sketch on the top of the crown plane to indicate the top edge circular shape of the crown. And we will also be doing a sketch on the tilted right plane that will be another layout of the blade and dropout plate when viewing the fork from the front of the bike. The tricky thing here is going to be to make sure that features in the front view layout are properly aligned with features in the tilted right plane layout. The difficult thing about this project is we are going to be working on some oddly oriented planes. One thing that may help you is to make some custom views so that you can always go to these tilted planes and be looking directly at them. The one plane that we'll be looking at a lot when we make our right layout view is this tilted plane going through the steering tube. If I click on this plane and go to my normal two orientation, it shows the plane straight on in a normal view, but in this case, it's showing it to us when viewed from the back of the bike. I feel a little more comfortable looking at the front of the bike. So if I click on that a second time, it'll just toggle to the other side. So here we see we're looking at the fork directly normal to the tilted right plane. Of course, we want to do this before we even draw this sketch. Now that I've got this orientation that I want, I can hit the space bar and select new view and type in tilted right. So even if I go off in some odd orientation, I can always hit my space bar. Here I've got the new view inserted, hit tilted right, and it'll bring me back to that view. So this is very convenient. Now that I'm in this orientation, I can use my arrow keys on my keyboard and rotate the view until I'm looking straight at the front plane again. However, in this case now, the steering axis appears to be straight up and down. So I can make a new view for that. And call this tilted front. So if I just spin these views with the axis vertical, all of a sudden this looks like a typical set of oriented planes. So we're going to be working in a space that's just tilted with respect to our normal universe. Here we see the y-axis is going this way and the x-axis going down this way. So let me now roll back before step five. We'll zoom in on this area and we're just going to do step five, which is drawing a circle on this crown top plane. Sketch, draw a circle, and I will make the center pierce to this axis. And I'll just pick this point and the circle and make that coincident. You don't necessarily have to do that at this stage of the feature tree, but it's kind of nice to have that there to remind you of where the top of the crown is and what the shape of it has to be. The next step, step six then, is going to be to draw the layout on the tilted right plane. So clicking on our tilted plane, sketch, First thing I want to do is draw some lines that are going to link up with these points in my front view sketch. These lines will give us alignment to find the bottom of the fork dropout plate, the center of the axle, and where the blade transitions from an oval or cross section down to a flat plate cross section. So just draw a center line here, here, and here. These all have to have horizontal relations to them. And then I can just do a coincident to these points. Now I'll just drag these out a little bit further. 
and we will be making use of that shortly. Up at the top here, this is where the top of the blade is going to be. I have to make sure that the top of the blade clears the tire, just like we did in the front view. I know the tire is approximately 25 millimeters in diameter, so I'll just draw a circle. Make that 25. And then I will add a sketch point on the top here. And I will make the center point coincident with our front plane. And this point is going to pierce to the arc that represents the outside of the tire. Now when we draw the profile of our blade, we can be sure that we're not going to be rubbing on the tire. I'm going to make that a construction line. Now up here in our front layout is this diamond shape that is a placeholder for the actual cross section of the blade where it meets the front plane. These four corners of the diamond are going to be where the four corners of the guide curves go. This will be the outer guide curve, inner, leading edge, and trailing edge. When we draw our curves in this view, we need to make sure that they come up to this point here, this point here, and to the center of the diamond here. So now I can start drawing the fork blade itself. I'm going to first start drawing the inner curve. I'll just make that a simple arc that's going to go up to this point here. Coincident. I want to make sure this is horizontal where it passes through the front plane, so I will add a horizontal center line. Tangent. Then I'm going to add the portion of the blade that goes all the way down to the axle. In my case, I'm just going to make this a straight line. Tangent to this arc. I'll bring it down to the line that represents the axle. In your case, you might want to make this a big bowing arc or come straight down and then bow out at the last minute. I've seen different design variations on that. Draw a horizontal line representing the end of the blade. Then I'll come back up the side for the outer curve. Zooming back in, I'm going to make these horizontal with respect to each other. I'll just put a center line here. Make that horizontal. And then I'll draw the outer curve going up to this point. This one I'll make a spline. Make that coincident to this point here. Drag out my spline handle, set that to horizontal. And make this end tangent to this end. That gives me my outer and inner guides. Now I need to draw the one that will represent both the leading and trailing edge, which will go right through the center here. Make another spline. This end will make a midpoint relation to this line. In this point, I will pierce to this line here, which will bring it in alignment with this point and this point when viewed from this direction. Dragging out my handles, horizontal. Now I can draw the leading edge of the blade, actually leading and trailing edge, going from that spline down to the midpoint of this line that I drew down here. Going back up, I'll just make sure that these are tangent. And you can see we have quite a bit of clearance around the tire. That's probably more than we need. I'm going to draw a center line that's vertical and passes through our steering axis. So I'll dimension from this point to that center line I put in and drag out to the side to get us the full width. And I can make this about 35 millimeters, I think. But you see my splines go a little bit nutty, so let's cancel that. 
first go down to the bottom, put a dimension here, which will help lock things in place a little bit. Make that about 15. Now let's try to go to the top again. Adjust that dimension, make that about 35. That helps. We need to drag this back to where it belongs. And we'll be adding some more dimensions that will give turn all these lines black. The other thing we need to add in this view is the dropout plate, which goes from this edge down to the bottom. That plate is going to be six millimeters wide, and the inner face of that plate has to align with a plane that's been put into our geometry file. The plate, when viewed on end, simply looks like a rectangle. You can make this line and this line collinear, this line and this line collinear. And I want the center of this to be on the center of my leading edge where it passes through this alignment. So I'll put a point here, which is at the midpoint of my plate. Make this line and the point coincident. Drag that a little bit, make this six millimeters wide. Now I need to make sure that this is located in the right place because it's important that this face be 100 millimeters away from the other face or 50 millimeters away from the front plane. We have a plane here in our inserted bike geometry file. That's going to be the fork dropout plane. Let's make that show that for a moment. I want to make this line and the fork dropout plane coincident. So I'll click on that plane, this line here, collinear. And my sketches freak out again a little bit, so I'm going to just have to drag back. That looks better. Now I can start adding a few more dimensions at the top here to get everything black. I think I'll make the fork about 22 millimeters wide. Yours might differ. And I'll start tweaking these curves a little bit so they look a little nicer. And that's pretty good. Zooming out. Want to add just one last thing to this sketch. We want to add some arcs where the blade starts tapering down to the dropout plate. So this line represents where the dropout plate begins and where the blade ends. But the tapering will actually start somewhere up here. So I'll just put in an arc here and another arc here. I'll make this tangent and I'll make this tangent. I'd like these to be even across in this direction. So click on these two points, make them horizontal. And then I can add any dimension that I want here to represent how quickly this starts tapering down. Let's try about 10. That looks pretty good. So you see what I've done is I've brought the blade all the way down to the center of the axle, when in fact the blade is going to end here and the dropout plate is then going to begin after that. But I just found it convenient to bring that all the way down to this common line where the blade comes down to in this view as well. When we go to make the blade, we're actually going to just be making a boundary that is in fact only going to go this far. But it doesn't matter if our guide curves actually go further than that, as you'll find out. If we go back to one of our custom views now, zoom back in on this area, we can start to see the logic behind having these construction lines. We're looking straight at that tilted plane. And if I use my arrow keys to rotate the view, you can see now how, as I'm viewing both views at the same time, this line is going straight through in aligning with this line here. This line is going straight through. This represents the axle and aligning to the center here. And then this one, which represents the bottom of the plate, goes straight through and aligns with the bottom in this view. It's all reflecting through this line here. So you can imagine that if this was drawn on a piece of paper, 
these two views would be unfolded in such a way that you would actually see this alignment occurring, which we can see when we're seeing both of the views at the same time like this. Going to the top of the sketch, we can see the same thing here, where the outer guide curve is aligning with the top of the diamond, the inner to the bottom, and the leading slash trailing curve is going right to the center of the diamond. So let's close this sketch and go back to our custom tilted front view and use our arrow keys to rotate the view to see how our two layout sketches align. So this concludes part four of the fork video. Part five, we will actually finally make some solid geometry when we create the boundary for the blade.